Research on non-human animals has played a massive part in the development of psychology. Many of the key concepts that help us understand human behaviour originated from research with non-human animals. For example, the idea of classical conditioning came from Pavlov's dog's experiments. Operant conditioning came from Skinner's experiments with rats. And Harlow's work with newborn rhesus monkeys paved the way for the development of attachment theory. Animal studies have increased our understanding of brain structure and function, leading to new treatments for people with impaired brain function. And animal research has also contributed to animal welfare, such as preservation of endangered species. But some of these benefits have come at a price. Research animals, mainly rodents, have been given electric shocks and been kept awake till they died. A lot of research that was quite common in the early and mid 20th century wouldn't be allowed today. The use of non-human animals is much more tightly regulated, not just by ethics, but by law. But then these rules have to be interpreted. And this leaves open the question of whether a particular piece of research should be done. This involves trying to balance the potential benefits of the research with the welfare of the animals being used. And this is where the Bates and Cube comes in. The Bates and Cube is based on three criteria. First, the quality of the research. It should be high quality. Second, the extent of animal suffering, which has to be minimised. And third, the likelihood of clear benefits from the research. But if we're going to ban all research with non-human animals because it infringes their rights, this raises much wider ethical questions. 